Hey, Micro Church, glad you're back with us uh, today. We're going to finish up uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. And so if you have a copy of God's Word, I encourage you to open it up and read along with me. 1 Peter chapter 4, starting in verse 12, and we'll read to the end of the chapter. It says this, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you were insulted for the name of Christ, you were blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God's and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or an evildoer, or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Uh, so this is Peter's second jump into uh, the, the waters of suffering and what that looks like as a follower of Jesus. Uh, and so, and, and again, he doesn't uh, beat around the bush at all, right? To, to open up this section of, of his letter that he wrote, he says, Do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes, not if it comes or perhaps it's going to come or maybe sometime down the road. No, Peter is living in the midst of a season of life and a season for the church. The early church, they were being persecuted and sometimes being hunted down. In the, in the early church in the first century, uh, the Romans would, uh, would, would feed Christians the lions in the Colosseum. Like this was the life of a Christian uh, in the early church. And so for them, the idea of trial and the idea of suffering was real and it was, uh, it was visceral and it was something that was waiting for them around uh, every corner and they had to be concerned for it. So for us today, when we look at the idea of suffering, we, we struggle with it. Right? We struggle with the idea of suffering because we, uh, we, for some reason, have this idea of entitlement around what it means to be a Christian. Like, if we're a follower of Jesus, that means everything is supposed to be easy and okay. And, and that is not what we see in Scripture at all. That is not the picture we see in the early church uh, in the Bible. Or if you look through the, the church history, if, you're, if, you, if you like history, and I love history, and I love studying church history, nothing about the early church, nothing in, in the history of God's people says, yes, become a Christian, follow Jesus, and your life will be easy. I don't know where we got that and why we have decided that should be part of our faith, but that is nowhere near what it is about. Peter says, don't be surprised when you suffer, right? It's going to happen. It's going to come. There is no way around it. There's, there's nothing for us to, uh, to, to think uh, in, in Scripture that should say, man, just, just suffering is not going to happen. Don't worry about it. You'll be okay. No, he says, don't be surprised when it comes upon you. And he says, why does it come upon you? He says, to test you. As though something, don't be surprised as, as if it's strange that this were happening to you. He says, but rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings. Once again, we, as we've talked about before, the idea of suffering isn't foreign to a Christian. In fact, it should be forefront in our minds because our Lord, our Savior, our example suffered. And so if Jesus suffered, we are no better than him. And so if Jesus suffered, then why would we be surprised when suffering comes upon us? We shouldn't be surprised. Because it's going to happen. If Jesus suffered, then we will suffer. Peter says it so. And it says so in other places in the New Testament as well. He says, but rejoice. Right? So rejoice uh, in, your, in your suffering. Don't be surprised by it, but in fact, rejoice in it. There's a whole different uh, ball of wax that we're dealing with, right? This idea of, oh man, I can't believe I'm suffering, should turn into, thank you God for allowing me to suffer for your name's sake. Right? That's a different animal right there that most Christians aren't willing uh, to even talk about. But that is what we are called to do. That is the attitude that we should have. Because if we are insulted for the name of Christ, he goes on to say in verse 14, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and God will rest upon you. But he said, then he goes on and says, look, don't, don't suffer for being an evildoer. Don't suffer for being a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or a meddler. Don't let that be the reason you suffer. Like if, if you suffer because you broke a law, that has nothing to do with Jesus. That has everything to do with your sin nature. And so don't suffer for that, but suffer for the things of God. Right? That's, that's what Peter is saying, right? If we're going to suffer, let it be worth suffering over. 
right? If, if you're going to have uh, an issue go on in your life, if you're going to have something uh, where, where you're going to suffer because of a decision you made, suffer because you made a decision to follow Jesus, not because you made a decision to, uh, to live for yourself. Because then you're not blessed, right? He says, you're blessed if you suffer because of the name of Christ, right? He says, yet yeah, if anyone suffers, verse 16, as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Let him glorify God in that name. See, we have this idea of suffering was when anything bad happens to us, we call that suffering. And it is, it's a form of suffering. That's not what Peter's talking about. Peter is saying when he's, when he's having a conversation, when he's writing down for us, what's been recorded in scripture and lasted 2,000 years for us today what we see here is this idea of suffering for the name of Jesus. What does that look like? What would it look like in, in the United States of America in 2024 to suffer for the name of Jesus? Well, we stand up for what we believe in. Right? That may mean that you lose some friends because you aren't willing to go along with the newest political fad or social justice thing going on. But no, you're going to stand firm on the gospel and you're going to suffer for it. And that's okay. That's what we're called to do. We're called to say, this is the Bible is what I stand on. The Bible is where I find truth. The Bible is where I find my life. And so because of that, I'm going to trust in God's word and I'm going to follow it, even if that means I might look uh, a little bit weird to the rest of the world or I might lose a friend here or there. Someone isn't going to talk to me anymore because of the stance that I'm taking because it says so in God's word. That's suffering for being a follower of Jesus. And that is when we, we see that we are blessed. So he says, look, this is what we're, we're called to do. This is how we're called to live as followers of Jesus, to suffer for Christ, suffer for the name of Jesus. He says, therefore, let, us, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Right? We suffer, and when we do, we trust God in it. When we make a decision to follow after what the word of God says, to, to do what we see G, live the way that we see Jesus live. When we do that, we're not entrusting our outcome of that situation or our lives to anybody else but God. And that is what we're called to do. That's how we're called to live. We are called to live in such a way that we bring honor and glory to the name of Jesus and it draws people in, just like we talked about last week, it draws people in to who we are and what we live for, and that is Jesus. And then even when it's hard, even when it makes us an outcast in our, in our social circles, or, or even when uh, the, the rest of the world wants to walk down one path, but the Bible says different, we follow what the Word of God says, and we may suffer for it, but we trust God in it, that He will redeem that. Even if it is hard for a moment, even if it's difficult for a season, even if uh, the world is against us, we trust that God will redeem what he, what the, the way that we live because we're doing it to honor and glorify him. And as we do that, we will see people come to know Jesus. And that's what we long for. That should be our desire, that through our lives, the way that we live, people would know God. So I hope that is how we can live this week. So this week as we suffer, as we encounter opportunities to take a stand for what we believe in as far as what the Bible says versus living the way the rest of the world lives, let's, let's stand on God's word so that we can... Uh, be an example to other people about who Jesus is and how he loves them. Thanks. We'll see you next time.